Does a car salesman deserve the bad reputation he's got? Hello, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here with the amazing Elizabeth to react to a Steve Richards video on the truth about the automobile salesman. Now, this is a truth from Steve's perspective. Many of you have asked for reactions to Steve Richards, so here we go. But uh, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about automobile salespeople. You know, this isn't a job that most people grow up wanting to be. I mean, people don't graduate no from kidding. high school wanting to be an automobile salesperson. They don't graduate from college wanting to be an automobile salesperson. <laughs> um, I've got a master's degree. I did not grow up, nor did I ever intend on being in the automobile business. However, uh, fortune smiled upon me because I couldn't find a job anywhere else at the time. And the automobile business accepted me when nobody else would. Now, hey, I got to commend Steve. He actually took the job he found. <laughs> yeah, and I have to share another observation, Liz. Um, I do recall when we first started doing reactions to Steve Richards, uh, Steve commented on you and said, I don't know who this Liz is, but she couldn't get a job anywhere. And, well, Steve, a car lot was the only one who wanted to hire you back then. So, um, Fair enough. Yeah. I didn't plan on doing it, but for six or seven weeks or so, until I could find something better. And 42 years later, uh, I haven't found anything better. But I find automobile salespeople as a group, whether they're in LA, Maine, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, Texas, uh, Ohio or anywhere else I work and I've worked all over the country. I find automobile salespeople to be uh, quite the honorable group. Now I know that that's not the record. Now that's a good thing I wasn't drinking milk right then because I would have snorted <laughs> it out of my nose. <laughs> Is there honor among thieves? Yeah, you know, you know, uh, here, here's the thing you guys. Gallup has been polling the general population of the United States since the middle 70s on the least to the most trustworthy professions in the US. And since the 70s, so 60 years, the car salesman has been a bottom dweller on the least trusted profession in the United States. And you know, once in a while they get some competition from the lawyer and the politician. Oh, for sure. People of that <laughs> ilk. Reputation. But the fact of the matter is, most people who become automobile salespeople um, did it by accident. Uh, many of them don't mean to do it for long, and very few of them get really good training. But let me, I agree let me with tell that. you what they do for a living. Uh, they work long hours. Um, most of them work on commission. Most of them work for management teams that, while uh, they may be great men and women, uh, haven't been trained to grow and develop a sales team. Uh, most people in automotive wow. management are in automotive management because they were pretty good salespeople. They don't get any management training. There's a big difference between uh, helping someone buy a car. So I'd give Steve some feedback here on the sales training. The interesting part is, is we just recently did a first time ever endorsement here on the Homework Guy show right. of a dealership in San Juan. That was uh, Capistrano Volkswagen and Capistrano Mazda. I talked to Miles Brandon, the owner of the dealership uh, the, last weekend and had a very nice conversation with him. And after visiting with him for some period of time, I had to tell him, I says, you know, it's really refreshing to talk to you, Miles, for two reasons. Number one, to talk to a dealership or dealer owner who talks my language. And number two, to talk to somebody from California who actually has an ounce of sense in them. <laughs> so, and you know what, what um, Miles Brandon was sharing with us is that none of his, um, none of his salespeople expected to be car salesmen either, but they were trained by him and trained in a way to actually do customer service. So they weren't expecting that kind of a job, but they And they were it, hired they well. on from customer service backgrounds. So Correct what the card business makes fun of calling order takers. Yeah. Uh, all of those people had experience being order takers. So they understood proper customer service and now they get to come work at the dealership and learn how to sell cars and are doing a fantastic job of it. Yep. 
and helping someone grow as an automobile salesperson. I mentioned they work long hours. They work nights. Uh, they work uh, Saturdays. They work Sundays. They work holidays. And most of them are pretty much abused by the buying public. Um, there's lots of myths about automobile salespeople. Um, liars, cheaters, uh, I mean, I, I see all the, uh, all the descriptions and the comments that I get, and those comments are wrong. Um, are there some bad eggs? Sure there are, but there's some bad eggs in every single business. Well, it kind of goes like this, Steve. You can fool some of the people some of the time, and all of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And when he shares that liars, cheats, uh, thieves, etc., that these are myths. I'll tell you what, um, we receive 10 times the comments on our channel that Steve Richards does on his, and the experiences that people share with us, even via email, are mind blowing. And then we've had conversation with uh, attorney Dan Whitney, who has uh, taken a number of dealers to court and won court battles with dealers who are committing fraud etc. And yeah, that's not the car salesman per se, but that's the ilk of the kind of characters that dealerships tend to hire. Right. And just the other day, we did a reaction to a finance manager out of Florida who was um, picked up by the law for um, forging signatures, forging yep. signatures on a finance app. So yeah, there's uh, it kind of is a den of thieves, sorry to say. <laughs> Most automobile salespeople I know are uh, extremely, <coughs> and, and they have to be. They're held to a higher level of integrity than most, uh, most jobs. I mean, they're under suspicion from the first phone call, the first email, the first text, well, when, you, when they meet and greet you uh, because of societal myths most people don't shouldn't. immediately trust an automobile salesperson. But you know what? Um, and I get lots of requests from my friends who aren't in the business. Uh, requests that sounds like that sound like this: um, How do I get the best deal on, on a car or a truck? And, and what I do is I tell them: I said, look, hundred percent agree. Do your research. Go on the internet. Uh, check out the vehicles. Um, Find a dealership near you because they're pretty much all the same. They pretty much all sell the vehicles for the same price. Are there some better deals here or there, sure. But I, I, I say, go visit your local dealer and find an automobile salesperson you like. I said, if you don't like the person, you know, excuse yourself, go to the receptionist and say, hey, I'd like another salesperson. Or tell the salesperson your, yourself, I'd like another salesperson. I don't like 100%. you. 100% okay, okay to do that. It's okay to do that. It's your money for the buyer. You know, I believe in the golden rule. He or she who has the gold makes the rules. As a customer, you get to make the rules. If you're in a store where they won't let you buy a vehicle the way you want to buy a vehicle, you're in the wrong store. And there are some stores out there. What's funny about his golden rule is that it's all about money. <laughs> it's not about yeah. behavior or, or how you treat people. It's about money. Ouch. But he's making a point that the car buying public should pay attention to because you are spending your money purchasing their product make them you control the car deal we talk about that all the time yeah um that you should be the one controlling it um you drive the process not them out there that i wouldn't do i wouldn't send people to unless i hated them i get that however more stores every single day are adopting a customer centric sales process where they are there to help you buy as opposed to sell you something but what I tell my friends is I said, look, find a salesperson you like and don't lie to them. And they look at me like I've got four eyes. And they said, what do you mean don't lie to them? I'm worried about the salesperson lying to me. And I said, look, I know you and I know thousands of automobile salespeople. And the person most likely to lie on the lot is not the salesperson. It's not the sales manager. It's more likely to be the customer. That's a very worn out uh, cliche used in the car business. Buyers are liars. And they use it all mm -hmm. the time. Use it all the time. Buyers are liars. And yeah, I do buyers uh, tell fibs and things like that on the, on the car lot. Yes. You know what? It's a very adversarial environment. Mm -hmm. And you know, to, to just use another kind of an example, think about if you were traveling through a area of the world that was at war 
and you're instructed when you leave, uh, don't share any personal information about yourself. Keep your conversations to a minimum with anybody. And then you take off. And somewhere along the way, you get stopped by, you know, a couple of rough looking characters in a truck. And they ask you, who, you, who are you? How many people do you have with you? Where are you going? What are your plans? Where do you live? <laughs> Give them evasive yeah. answers on all of it because you're at that point you're swimming in the shark tank which is the equivalent of being on the car lot you're sh you're swimming in the shark tank and what you say and what you do can and will be used against you sure and they're little white lies i i get that it's almost like it's okay to lie to a car salesperson but it's not if you shoot your salesperson straight more than likely they're going to shoot you absolutely straight too Automobile, selling automobiles and trucks, new and used, is a noble, noble profession. Make no mistake about that. Again, I know that there, I know the stories. Um, I've, I've been in this a long time. I was trained very poorly. Um, most salespeople are. But you know what? Most of them are decent human beings. Most of them are uh, family men and, and women. Most of them are just trying to do a job and do it right. Again, uh, if you find a rookie, be patient, okay? If you find a veteran, you will find that that veteran, if he or she's been doing it for any length, length of time, will have adopted an attitude where they are there to help you buy a car. They're not there to help you sell anything. And if you're ever in a store where you're, you're feeling pressure, leave. I, I get that. Um, there shouldn't be any pressure to buy a car or a truck. Now, there may be persistence. If a salesperson spends time with you, helps you pick out the right vehicle, a vehicle that you need, a vehicle that uh, you want, a vehicle that you can afford, they have an obligation. I mean, you showed up to buy, they have an obligation to help you buy. Um, they may ask you to buy more than once, twice, three, four, five times. You know what? That's okay if it's the right thing to do. Because guess what? If you don't buy, they don't make a single penny. And there's a great myth, where well, there used to be a myth about what people made when they sold a car. Um, by the way, right now, there's never been a better time in history to be an automobile salesperson just because of the law. Boom, right out of the horse's mouth. Look at that. Record profits <laughs> out there, you guys. All right. Record profits. <laughs> Bad time to buy a car. Yeah, wait. Law of supply and demand. But in most cases, and it'll get back to normal in the, in the not too distant future. Um, Salespeople have to work really, really hard to make a good living, like any other job. You need to work hard to make a good living. So give salespeople a break. Again, most of them, the vast majority of them, work hard. They work long hours. They, if they don't produce, they don't get paid. Uh, it, they take all sorts of abuse from not just consumers, but from uh, untrained management teams from time to time as well. So next time you buy a car or a truck, new or used, give the salesperson a break. Treat he or she like a human being, and you'll find that he or she will probably treat you like a human being, and they'll treat you like the gold that you are because you do have the gold. If the store doesn't intend, doesn't announce that you can buy the car the way you want to buy a car, it's probably not the right dealership. If you got any questions, shoot them to me. If you got any nasty comments, shoot them to me too. Like I said, you can't hurt my feelings. I've got none left. Oh, yikes. All right. <laughs> <I'm> stunned. <laughs> <laughs> so do you feel like you have some, some sorrow or some pity for salesmen now, Kevin? No, I, I don't actually. I don't because it, they made the bed and they get to sleep in it. Yeah. And that's the way it works. But yeah. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this reaction to Steve Richards' video on and his take on the reputation of the automobile salesman. Thanks for joining us. I want to express heartfelt appreciation to those of you who had donated or asked how you could donate to help with my medical expenses. As you can see, my recovery is going well, but it costs a lot of money to get sick in this country. Our staff has put a PayPal and Cash App link in the description box down below for those of you who are interested. And 100% of these donations from viewers are going towards Kevin's medical expenses. All right, if you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up. And please, always remember to comment on our videos and then share them 
online with your family and friends. Always remember to comment. Comments really matter because they help boost our online visibility and lead others to great Homework Guy content. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.